is Common Sense Radio. Straightforward and no excuses. This is the Steve Gruber Show. Call me crazy. What I said was perfectly right and spot on accurate. Boy's got a mouth like a cannon. Always shoot the door. Stop, 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 stop. 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 I mean, you're way off, Skip. Hey, boy. Yeah, you know, it's not cynical. It's common sense. Pay attention to me when I'm talking to you. Genuine, accountable, and wrong. Here is Steve Gruber. Welcome back to the Steve Gruber Show. Duran Martinez in for Steve. It is about seven minutes after the top of the hour. and the Winding it down on a Monday. We'd love to have you on board with us today. Join the conversation. 888 900 9966 You can also find us on Facebook. Look for the Steve Gruber Show. Ah, yes. Welcoming refugees? No, we're going to put that on hold for a little while, according to Governor Snyder. Uh, The thought that we would be welcoming Syrian refugees is not set well with, uh, with, with many. And now after the attacks in Paris over the weekend, the possibility that one of them had embedded himself as a Syrian refugee, one of the people uh, that was part of the plot that was carried out, uh, possibly uh, spent some time in Syria fighting with ISIS and, and got through. One got through the system. It's not impossible. It's not. It's not even improbable. The fact is that it it more than likely did happen. So, and of course, ISIS is taking responsibility for the uh, Paris massacre. Why wouldn't they? It was a big event. Even if it hadn't been them, I'm sure they would claim responsibility. But in Michigan, Governor Snyder putting the refugee acceptance efforts uh, on hold, and not the only governor to do so. The governor of Alabama. Also taking a stance and putting things on hold, although uh, that stance over there in Alabama or down there, rather, seems to be a bit more on the permanent side as where ours seems to be a a temporary hold. Michigan's Republican governor, who has bucked many of the party leaders for welcoming Syrian refugees, is putting efforts on hold. Not a permanent stop, but a hold following the deadly attacks in Paris. Governor Snyder said in a statement on Sunday that the state is postponing efforts to accept refugees until federal officials fully review security clearances and procedures. Uh, Governor Snyder says Michigan is proud of our rich heritage and history of immigration, uh, but that Michigan's priority is protecting the safety of our residents as well. It should be. Several GOP candidates have criticized the Obama administration's plans uh, to accept the 10,000 Syrian refugees and urge much greater scrutiny. Officials say Friday's gun and bomb attacks that killed 129 plus. One of the attackers had a Syrian passport and uh, is believed to have been uh, embedded with the Syrian refugees and... uh, very good possibility that the passport was faked, thus gaining him entrance into France and carrying out uh, despicable crimes against innocent people, people uh, enjoying sport events, concerts, a concert venue. One, uh, the, a merchandising manager for the uh, the band out of California called the Eagles of Death Metal, was one of the victims in, that, uh, in those uh, attacks in Paris. A prosecutor will not pursue charges against the husband of a, a former Michigan lawmaker who sent anonymous text messages threatening to reveal an extramarital affair between his, mo- uh, his wife and another legislator. Lapeer County Prosecutor Tim Turkelson confirmed on Sunday that no charges will be filed against the husband of Cindy Gamrat, Joe Gamrat, or anyone who helped him. State police sent a report to the prosecutor after investigating former 
Representative Todd Corser's complaint of getting threatening texts over his relationship with then-Representative Cindy Gamrat. Corser resigned. Gamrat was expelled in September. Corser sent a false email saying that he had uh, sex with a male prostitute, which was an attempt to make uh, the affair less plausible if revealed by an anonymous, uh, anonymous rather, blackmailer. Turkelson's decision was first reported uh, by the county press of Lapeer. I'm not sure which would be worse. Claiming, claiming false claims that you're having, uh, that you had sex with a male prostitute to cover up your affair with another state representative who later wanted her job back and thought she deserved her job back. Have you not put your family through enough? That's the question. And uh, no, no charges being filed against um, Joe Gamrat. Okay, going to go to Sam in Grand Rapids listening to the show this morning. Good morning, Sam. How are you today? Hi, I just heard that you had mentioned that the merchandising manager for the Eagles was one of the victims in France. No, Eagles of Death Metal was the name of the band. Oh, Eagles of Death Metal. Yes. I, I apologize. I, <laughs> no, I no, quite all right. You. No, Sorry. no, quite all right. Okay, well, my point, my, my point was lost then. Thank you. Well, thank you. And, and, and I, don't think, uh, I don't think it really matters whether, the, whether it was the Eagles or the Eagles of Death Metal. Okay, whatever the fact, the, you know, lives lost in general, whether they're American or not. Um, but we, we've had, according to the president, uh, ISIS under control, contained, the JV team. No, might want to might want to rethink that, and uh, still a uh, manhunt for another person involved, uh, the 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 mastermind behind the whole hit over the weekend in France. Thirteen minutes after the top of the hour, um, Republican presidential candidate Ben Carson said he would uh, cut down on illegal immigration across the U.S.-Mexico border by cutting all benefits that he says attract illegal immigration. Uh, The comments came during a press availability Sunday after he and his wife spent the day campaigning in southern Nevada. He uh, spoke at the uh, Evangelical Church Service in Las Vegas and then at an afternoon uh, rally in nearby Henderson. The retired neurosurgeon said it would be done easily in a year and suggested prosecuting all first-time offenders, installing a double fence and using technology-driven surveillance to cut down sharply on the percentage of illegal crossings. I don't know. You t- take away the benefits? <laughs> take away the, the, uh, the, the milk and honey of those coming to America illegally? No, we can't do that. Got to make it easier for them. 14 minutes after the top of the hour, I'm Duran Martinez in for Steve Gruber today. <laughs> it's a Monday. Welcome to it. 888 900 Would love to have you join us here today. Also, you can join us on Facebook as well. Look for the Steve Gruber Show. Keeping you in touch with Michigan and the world. Filling in for Steve Gruber, here is Duran Martinez. Sheepdog, standing in the rain. Frog, Welcome back to the Steve Gruber Show. I'm Duran Martinez, winding down a Monday morning, kind of 19 minutes after the top of the hour, before we get to our next guest. Going to go to Rick in Eaton Rapids. Good morning, Rick. How are you today? Real good. Hey, I want to know why it's taken 14 years for the people in the political class to wake up and finally start saying no mercy when it comes to dealing with terrorists and terrorist activity. Rick, we're a kinder, gentler nation. We're full of political correctness and allowing things to happen and to alter our uh, way of doing things, our way of life to, uh, you know, accommodate for those we're bringing in, Rick. Well, I realize this, (laughs) but, you know, I, I was also a Marine, and I remember studying the Battle of Tripoli, and there was absolutely no mercy, and we had no trouble with those people for over, those people for over 150 years. 
You know, uh, thank you so much for your service. And look, it, it, it's uh, the, the common sense issue that you bring to to uh, to our attention. And, and a lot of times, sadly, preaching to the choir uh, on this show, you know, be it Steve, myself, uh, on a daily basis, uh, you, you know, bring us some concrete evidence to say that, you know, fighting back is a bad idea or striking is a bad idea. That's all. Rick, I appreciate your call uh, out of Eaton Rapids this morning. Uh, going to go to our next guest, Mike Hughes. Going to find out what's new on TV. November sweeps are upon us. Good morning, Mike. How are you? Good morning. Yeah. And there's some stuff that's even newer than we thought it was going to be. Uh, if you read the papers today, you read about a pretty good Supergirl episode that was supposed to be tonight. Sure. And that was right when it was written. It was right when it went in the papers. Unfortunately, CBS at the last second has changed it. They pulled... The Supergirl for tonight at 8 o'clock. They pulled the NCIS at Los Angeles at 10 o'clock, put in new episodes. They didn't say why, but you got to guess it's because both episodes involve terrorism and it's just too close to the uh, Paris events and so forth. That's, that's what I have to guess. So anyway, when you read about what's in there in uh, it, Supergirl, it's not that episode. That's a good episode. It'll show up eventually. But I'm, Supergirl's a pretty good show anyway, so give it a try. 8 o'clock tonight on, on CBS. Now, you, you said uh, you talked about the Supergirl uh, episode being altered. Uh, another one, it was the NCIS that was being taken away because it had to do with ISIS attacks? Apparently, yeah. NCIS Los yeah. Angeles at 10 o'clock. CBS didn't say why they made the change, but you've got to guess that that's why it was. I did see the Supergirl episode, and it did have, you know, it's not ISIS or anything else, but it did have a terrorist, and it did have a, a bombing and so forth. So that must be why they pulled it. Absolutely. Now, what else is happening? I mean, we're we are getting through, we're, we're fully into the, the sweeps period, uh -huh. and, and what does that mean for television as what, make what, or break for some shows? Yeah, what's interesting is, as you know, for local stations, it means everything, because they push so hard. This is where they sell their advertising is from what happens. So the news... Uh, cast, you're going to see them try very hard promotions and special reports and so forth. For the networks, it doesn't mean much anymore. There are no uh, big sweep specials or things like that. The only thing it means is that it, if a show's doing well, uh, they definitely won't have reruns during November. And if a show's not doing well, they might pull it temporarily and put something else in. Uh, a show called Minority Report on, on Fox uh, got pulled recently for a week just to put in something else because it was doing so badly. But the sweeps just aren't what they used to be. It just means, hey, not as many reruns to worry about. Well, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I don't think I've watched regular, you know, what, what we would refer to as regular yeah. television in so long. And, and tell me this, Mike, how is it that, like, History Channel can do an all-day marathon of, say, like, Pawn Stars yeah. or, or you know, one of the other channels do something like, uh, you know, Oak Island and, and things like that. And yet, even though we've probably seen them ten times, we're still drawn into these all-day marathons. How is this working Isn't for Isn't that them? weird? Some of those things work well. Some things repeat very well, and some of them don't. And 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 you're right. There's times when I could watch them forever, and and, and there's shows that, that don't. Uh, and and there's some things about nonfiction. I'll, I'll give you an example of a really good nonfiction that opens this week. Uh, and this happens to be on on the air rather than cable, but it's a American Experience Tuesday night, nine o'clock on most PBS stations. That's the time. And it's a story about a guy from Toledo, of all places, named William Morgan, who, after all kinds of other things, he'd been expelled from two schools, he'd been discharged from the Army, he'd been this and that, but joined the circus, everything, went away and became a commandante in Castro's revolution, and eventually was executed by Castro. It's just an incredible story that starts and ends in Toledo. And that thing is at 9 o'clock on Tuesday night. It's just great. So it just reminds you that sometimes nonfiction is a whole lot better than fiction. Maybe that's why Pawn Stars works. Maybe that's why the other shows work. Because sometimes just things that happen in real life are just darned interesting. Well, you know, and I think, too, there is a learning benefit, something that I really like about uh, shows like Pawn Stars, uh, that, that give you some historical value to the, to the physical objects that come into the store. And it's not just, you know, focused around the complete antics of, of the, the wacky pawn shop in Vegas. Uh, there's a lot of education being brought in on that. 
Sure. And you got to remember that one of the pawn shop shows, and I can't remember one which one now, is set in Detroit. It's, it's, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and those are interesting people, too. So, so, so the shows work all over. Obviously, people are crazier in Las Vegas than they are in Michigan. Oh, they no. They really are, okay? <laughs> but, so they're interesting, but, 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 but they're interesting all over. So, yeah, this, um, you know, there's a lot to say for what has come on on cable, although I still say from time to time you've got to watch what's, what's <coughs> on real life. Incidentally. Best show on television right now, cable or not, is is Fargo, and that is a cable show. It's on FX, ten o'clock tonight, ten o'clock on Mondays. It's it's up to episode five now. Even if you haven't seen the first four, you you got to start watching it. First of all, it's it's set in Minnesota, so we kind of know the characters. We kind of know how they work and how they talk and so forth. And and you're going to really like the show. All right, Mike Hughes, appreciate you updating us on what's going on with television. Okay, have 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 a good time, and uh, if you get a chance on Saturday, watch a show called Turkey Hollow for the kids, a Muppet show on uh, on Saturday night on Lifetime. Have, have a good time, Duran. You too, th- Mike. Thanks so much. Appreciate you joining us here, Mike Hughes, long time, long time friend of the show. Love having him on here. More coming your way. Twenty five minutes after the top of the hour on the Steve Gruber Show. The Steve Gruber Show, American Values, with Midwestern Common Sense. Nothing from nothing leaves nothing. You gotta have something if you want to be with me. Welcome back to the Steve Gruber Show. From nothing leaves nothing. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's a Monday. Still rolling through it. Still, <laughs> still muddling through this Monday. Opening day of firearm deer season yesterday in Michigan. Uh, of course, nine townships in the um, nine townships uh, in three counties closed for baiting because of a CWD found in Michigan. And uh, you know, it's it's not affecting the whole state as it did a few years back when CWD was first found in a, a private facility in Kent County. Okay, we didn't have the whole uh, the whole shutdown of the Lower Peninsula for baiting. But, again, if you're out hunting, make sure you do know the rules. Michigan.gov slash DNR will, uh, will help you find out uh, what those townships were and uh, where it's safe to bait. And hopefully everybody has a safe, if, if nothing else, safe firearm deer season here in Michigan. Uh Going to go to Chris Farrell, Director of Research and Investigations for Judicial Watch. The FBI has nearly 1,000 active ISIS probes inside the U.S. Uh, Good morning, Chris. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Great to be on with you. Uh, Absolutely. A a disturbing number to look at. 1,000 probes going on. Now, mind you, uh, some of them may just be, uh, you know, the slight red flags that come up, but still, that's a pretty big number, uh, especially after looking at what happened in France over the weekend, um, and something we should be concerned about. Absolutely, and the, the the number was really arrived at because of a letter written by the Association of uh, of Sheriffs in the state of Colorado, writing to President Obama, objecting to the closure and transfer of pr- prisoners out of Guantanamo. These sheriffs, and of course everyone knows that you know sheriffs around the country are the, the chief law enforcement officer in any county, and they very often have uh, the additional responsibility of, uh, of running the jails and prisons and also security of courts and courtrooms and moving prisoners around uh, between those facilities. And so they have a vested interest not just in the overall public safety, but also in, in the administration and the maintenance and, and the operations of uh, the prison system. And so these sheriffs uh, objected and said, look, you know, uh, we've already got uh, a huge number of investigations ongoing. Uh, we know the FBI has them. Plus, now you're thinking about closing Gitmo and bringing the absolute worst of the worst into the United States, which raises some very serious constitutional questions. Um, so th- this is a very grave, serious situation we're involved in. The president has very badly misjudged the threat posed by ISIS. You'll recall a year ago he was calling them a JV team. 
the day of the attacks, he said that they were essentially isolated or constrained, limited in some way. He's just out of touch. He just he, he is not aware of or does not appreciate the threat to the American public. And um, you know, we're what happened in Paris could be New York, Washington, uh, Cleveland could be anywhere. I mean, there's, there's no there's no constraints on on these people and what they're what they're able to do. So. You know, and, and I don't want to. I don't want to. Like, again, I'm, I've not been one to condemn a whole group of people. But come on, Michigan, uh, our Dearborn community, Hamtramck community, uh, is you know, it, it has to be looked at as well. It's just a question of demographics. It has nothing to do with if you have a high concentration of a particular ethnicity. It just it begs the question. Look, if 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 Catholic Polish nuns were blowing up buildings, I would tell you you got to look at Chicago, right? I mean, it's just where's the concentration? It, it, it's uh, the, the 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 larger the number, the greater the probability. It's just math. It has nothing to do with with being mean or being hateful. It's just mathematics. Uh, and frankly, if you had a very aggressive uh, sort of community relations situation where you had any number of uh, leaders in the Muslim community, whether it be civic or you know, secular or religious, coming forward and actively promoting uh, dialogue, actively trying to root out the bad actors, actively engaged in a positive alternative to, to, the, to the death cult, uh, then he could say, look, this is the way out. These are the good guys. These are the people that support American principles. But I, I don't see that. Maybe I'm just ignorant. I mean, I'm, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to concede that I just may be an incredibly ignorant person. I don't think so, but I'd, I'd love to be proven wrong. I want to see the person from the Islamic community who is, who is actively out running around offering an alternative to the death cult and offering to, to root out the people that are the bad apples in the community. I want to see that person. I can't name them off the top of my head. Speaking with Chris Farrell here on the Steve Gruber Show, uh, Director of Research and Investigations for Judicial Watch. You know, going back to Gitmo, as the eyes of America were on France, and, and believe me, that was everybody. Look at Facebook. Look at social media. Everybody's changed their profile picture to reflect it. Uh, five detainees, like you mentioned, from Gitmo being gone. Um, where where is the logic in thinking that these detainees and the 107 possibly left uh, are actually rehabilitated to the point anything less than shock treatment to an utter dribbling mass I don't think would be any kind of rehabilitation but we're being asked to believe that that's the case that these are these are okay people they're gonna be good contributors to society, and we're going to let them go, get back into the system. I mean, it's just wishful thinking. It's fantasy land stuff. It has, there's no connection to reality. And you, I mean, you need to just watch the news. And I mean, France, one of the most enlightened, liberal, open uh, countries in all of Western Europe, enormous population of folks from the uh, Middle East and Southwest Asia, uh, the vast majority of whom are Muslim. Uh, all sorts of accommodations have been made we, to the point where there's no-go zones in Paris where uh, you know, persons of other ethnicities and religions are essentially not permitted to go. So every accommodation has been made. The, the people have bent over backwards to, to facilitate and accommodate, and the result is what you saw over the weekend. So, I mean, I don't... At what point do we say enough is enough? This is ridiculous. Well, I do have to commend the French on, on being so quick to respond uh, with, with airstrikes and closing down their borders. But yet, we've got this under control, right? According to the president, we've got this under control. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't before see it. The attack, I, I just don't see it. I, I, don't, I don't either. That is sarcasm, uh, and it's... It, it's uh, most obvious effect, but uh, Chris, we appreciate uh, you bringing more common sense to the show here today on the sh um, Steve Gruber Show. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Absolutely, yeah. And and, and again, you know, look, uh, 
I, I've said it a million times about preaching to the choir. And, you know, and again, if you've got something contrary, telling me, you know, telling me that I'm wrong about Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders and Governor O'Malley and the love fest that went on the other day with the uh, debate. Tell me. I got time to listen. Steve Gruber Show. Duran Martinez on the Michigan Talk Network. Taking a closer look at the stories that affect you most with a big dose of common sense. Filling in for Steve Gruber, here's Duran Martinez. Welcome back to the Steve Gruber Show. Duran Martinez here on the Michigan Talk Network. Good to have you along. Good looking weekend for sports for the uh, the Spartans. They did well, and I knew, and I knew Michigan coming up against Indiana was going to be a difficult game. And uh, double overtime proved that. Joining me, the dean of sports right now in studio this time, which is really cool to have him here rather than uh, than on the phone. But the first time we've ever shared uh, studio time, Tim Stout joins us. Good morning, Tim. Morning, Duran. How are you this morning? Good, sir. How are you? Good, thank you. Nice day. Absolutely day. Okay, uh, good day. Michigan State uh, doing well over the weekend. Jumping up in the in the rankings a little bit. Yeah, they did. It's uh, surprising to me a little bit. I think they only jumped as much as they did simply because teams in front of them lost. They did not play a very good team on Saturday. Uh, but like you say, they moved up a little bit. But I guess the whole season comes down in large measure to what they're going to do this Saturday, right? It, it, absolutely. Now, of course, they're taking on Ohio State this weekend. They have Ohio State 330 Saturday in Columbus. Oh, God. And the horseshoe. That's going to be a difficult, difficult road to hoe for the Spartans. But I don't, I don't know. What do you think? Well, I agree with you. I think it's going to be a difficult road to hoe. Uh, you know, Ohio State's numbers are staggering. Uh, you know, they're 48-3 and three under this coach. And uh, playing at home, they're even tougher than that. I think one thing that hurts Michigan State a little bit is this is the first game this season that Ohio State is going to have a chance to really get fired up to play. They've play- Everybody has said, well, you know, they really haven't played anybody, and to some degree that's true. So therefore, now they have a game to get fired up for. Uh, you know, game day is going to be there for ESPN, which is a tribute to Michigan State. It's the third time Michigan State has been at the site of game day, and that's not to say strange things can't happen. Ask the Detroit Lions. So uh, you know, so it's not as if it's Im- impossible by any stretch of the imagination. But I think some things are going to have to happen in that game for Michigan State to beat Ohio State uh, in Columbus. But look, you. Get prepared to play, go down and play, give it the best shot you got, see what happens. Now, Michigan coming off a double overtime win against Indiana, uh, a game I listened to on the radio, and and just seconds left in the game, you're, you're, you know, it's, it's overtime, and it's like, oh gosh, here we go. It, a lot of Michigan fans really did not take Indiana for the for the good team that they are. They're a couple of players away from being a really, really good team. Well, offensively, they've always had some success. Defenses just killed them, and defense killed them against Michigan Saturday. They're much tougher at home, I think, than they are on the road. They have a lot of young players defensively, and it shows when they play big games. I know one thing. If Michigan beats Penn State on Saturday because they play at noon, they'll finish before the Ohio State-Michigan State game. It's going to be the first time maybe ever, that Michigan is really going to be an Ohio State fan. Because if Ohio State and Michigan both win this Saturday, then they play for the Big Ten East title next Saturday in Ann Arbor, and the winner of that goes to the Big Ten title game, which hasn't happened. And Michigan's never been to the Big Ten title game. So two things have to happen to set that up. Ohio State and Michigan have to win uh, this Saturday. Now, Michigan is a five-point favorite of Penn State. I think that's going to be another very difficult game for Michigan, but... They're favored, so you know if the two favorites win, then it's Michigan Ohio State for the Big Ten East title the following week. Now let's let's take this further hypothetically. Uh, Iowa is, is is strong. I mean, who's going to be able to? Com- will they be able to compete with the winner coming out of the East? Well, I'm not as big of Iowa fan. I give them credit for the year they've had, and they're going to get to 11-0 because they'll win at home on Senior Day against Purdue this Saturday. So that'll make 11-0. I have them losing their final game at Nebraska. Nebraska's playing for a bowl game. I think that's going to be really tough for Iowa to win that game Thanksgiving Friday. But but that'll knock them probably out of the playoff. But it'll certainly they'll still be in the Big Ten championship game. And in that game on a neutral site, I don't think almost anything's like they'd probably be an underdog. They'd be close to even, if not a slight favorite, against Michigan State, against Ohio State. 
Uh, they would probably be uh, an underdog, and against Michigan, if they played Michigan, they might be a slight favorite or a close game. So, like you say, hypothetically, even with a couple of weeks left, there are a lot of possibilities that are still out there. Sure. Big Ten has been uh, been one to watch. And, of course, I was looking at the top ten uh, teams, uh, Baylor losing over the yeah. weekend. A lot of teams fell over the weekend. They did. The team that's coming on like gangbusters is Oklahoma. Uh, if Oklahoma can win out, it's going to have to beat Oklahoma State, who's probably undefeated. But I think Oklahoma's made great strides since the loss to Texas. It looks to me, if you ask me right now, I think the best team in the country is Alabama. And I think Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State look like they're kind of leaning toward getting in there. And then the last one to me is between Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Notre Dame. One of those three, in my opinion, most likely has a chance to fill out the final four in these last couple of weeks. Tim Stout joining us here on the Steve Gruber Show. Tim, uh, I need to ask you, do you think we'll see a national champion this year that is absolutely undefeated? Well, it's hard to say. Uh, I mean, because Clemson and Ohio State right now are still undefeated. Uh, and if you get that far, the one thing is those semifinal games are grinders. I mean, they're 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 tough to call. you got them on a neutral site. You've had several weeks off to prepare. You get injured players back. You can have upsets certainly along the way. So to think, I don't think there's one clear cut favorite right now at all. But if you ask me who I think's the best team playing right now, I'd say Alabama. And they got a, they got Charleston Southern this week. Then they got Auburn, who I think they'll crush both of them. And then they probably get Florida in the SEC title game, and they'll crush them. Well, that's going to send them into the semifinals at at twelve and one. And, uh, and they might be the Las Vegas favorite at that point, depending on how Clemson, Clemson's got to play a tough game yet in the ACC title game. Uh, and they got to go yet, I think, to South Carolina on a row. I'll tell you another team that's really, really playing well nobody talks about is North Carolina. And they lost the opening game of the year and have won every single game mm-hmm. since, and they're just blowing everybody out. But nobody really knows about them because it's a basketball school. But sure. North Carolina, to me, is not completely out of it yet either. All right, about a minute left in this. Uh, Detroit winning at Lambeau for the first time since 91. Wow. Well, uh, I think Green Bay's got issues to begin with. Mm -hmm. Uh, The Lions, you know, obviously they had a week off a little bit. They're not playing for much of anything, so they can just freewheel it. It would have been an incredible loss had that thing got away yesterday because of that onside kick. But, you know, good for them that they played hard in that game. I guess Mrs. Ford's got some magic about her since she talked to the team the Lions are 1-0. And Green Bay side, though, they don't look to me nearly like the Green Bay team that had opened up with, what, five, four or five consecutive sure. wins to start the year. They got a lot of issues uh, that they're going to have to deal. They got to go play Minnesota next week on a road. Uh, but you know what? Uh, the Lions, uh, it, look, it's one game. Doesn't really mean much for the playoffs for them, but good for them. They finally won a game. Absolutely. And, and you know, and Green Bay can always blame Ditka. And uh, why not for the yeah. sweater? <laughs> well, I claim that, you know, just as soon as you think somebody has no chance, like the Lions at Green Bay, you'd say, well, Ohio State never loses a game. Well, you know, Michigan State can go in there with the same free wet. Nobody gives them a chance to win. Nope. 